Hello everyone, welcome back to the Anatomy Lab. Today we are going to be taking a look at the heart as well as its major blood flow. But before we could talk about the specific structures, we need to talk about some organization of the heart first. So the first thing that I'm actually going to talk about are the blood vessels since we'll mostly focus on the heart. So let's just talk about the major types of blood vessels that we have really quickly before we get into some specifics. So for the blood vessels, you can see that you have a variety of different blood vessels that are connected to the heart here. And these blood vessels are going to be mainly either arteries or veins. So the main characteristics of arteries and veins is the fact that they're either going to tr carry the blood towards the heart or away from the heart. So whether it's a blood vessel that's bringing blood to the heart or carrying the blood away from the heart as the heart pumps it out, those are going to be arteries or veins. So if you look closely, you have these blood vessels that are connected to these top chambers of the heart. These are going to be called veins. And veins are going to be carrying the blood to the heart. So the veins will carry the blood to the heart, and then it will go down into the bottom chambers, where it is going to then squeeze it out, and that is then going to squeeze it out into what's called the arteries. So the main thing is veins go towards the heart, arteries go away. So that is going to be the major organizational thing that you should remember for this, but we'll talk a lot more about specific arteries and veins in just a minute. So to get started with the actual heart itself, like you can see the heart is uh, not exactly what a lot of people think of, like a lot of people think of like a cartoonish looking heart, but you can see the heart is actually going to be made up of four chambers, two on the top, two on the bottom, and it is actually going to also be divided between its left and right sides. But furthermore, there's another thing regarding the heart that you can see as well, which is that the heart is actually going to have this little point called the apex of the heart, and that is going to go towards the left side of the heart. So when you're asking yourself how do you orient yourself to the heart and all of its structures, look for the apex of the heart, but furthermore, you can also look for the bigger side of the heart, which is going to be the left. Now, with that said, let's take a look at some internal structures of the heart so that we can see what they look like on the inside. So if you look closely, you have two top chambers and two bottom chambers, which are furthermore divided between left and right sides. Now, when we look at the top chambers, we will see that they're going to be very thin-walled. And these chambers on the top are going to be called atria, which is the plural form, but if I talk about one, it's going to be called an atrium. But these two atria, their main job is going to do two things. So what they're going to do is to collect blood via the veins. And then when they collect the blood, their one thing that they need to do is to pump that blood down into the bottom of the heart so that it could be squeezed out through these bottom chambers called the ventricles. So the atria don't really need a lot of muscular tissue. They're just going to be receiving blood and then pumping the blood downward. Now, once the blood is pumped down into the ventricles, the ventricles will fill up as much as they can. And then once they've done so, they will pump the blood out of the ventricles into the next major blood vessels, which will largely be different types of arteries. So notice the difference between the atria and the ventricles. The atria are very thin walled, while the ventricles are very thick especially the left ventricle, which is the strongest out of the four, because the left ventricle is the one that has to pump blood to the systemic circulatory system, which goes to basically everywhere except the lungs. So going to your fingertips, going to your toes, and going all the way to your head and brain, that's using your left ventricle. So to recap, what we have here is right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle. So... With that said, with our four chambers, we should also look at a few major other structures, which are called valves. So if you look closely, between the atria and the ventricles, you have these two valves called atrioventricular valves. But they have their own specific names as well. So looking on the right side, this valve is called the tricuspid valve. And then looking on the left side, this valve is called the mitral valve. In like literature, you might also hear this being called the left atrioventricular valve or the bicuspid valve, but in our lab manual, I think mitral valve is the preferred one, so please use that. So tricuspid valve on the right side, 
mitral valve on the left side, and being atrioventricular valves, there's a couple more things that you can see connected to them, which are these little strings called chordae tendinae. So your heart strings are called chordae tendinae, and they're going to be attached to these little muscles called papillary muscles. So that is going to be like the case for your atrioventricular valves, but you have two more valves called semilunar valves that are going to be between the ventricles and the next major blood vessel. So you can probably see the one on the right side. Here's your right ventricle. Here's the next major blood vessel. This is called the pulmonary valve. So pulmonary valve is going to be at the bottom of the structure called the pulmonary trunk, and this is going to keep the blood from falling back down into the ventricle. Now the left ventricle also has a valve, but you need to kind of twist the heart a little bit so you can see it. When you look up from the left ventricle, you can see the aortic valve, and as you might guess, this is going to lead into this next major blood vessel called the aorta. So, so far, what we've had is our four chambers, as well as our four valves, but now we have to add on some blood vessels as well. So, remember that we have arteries and veins, and depending on whether they're bringing blood to the heart or going away from the heart, they will be like arteries or veins respectively. So, given that we have the right atrium here, which is receiving blood into the heart, we have two veins. So receiving blood, you have two veins bringing blood to the heart. You have the superior vena cava bringing blood from the upper body, and then the inferior vena cava bringing blood from the lower body. So upper body includes your upper extremity as well as your head, while the lower body includes your thorax, abdomen, as well as your entire lower extremity. So both of those from your systemic circulatory system go to your right atrium. And then let's go through this. What would be next after the right atrium? You'll have the tricuspid valve to the right ventricle to the pulmonary valve. And then pulmonary is going to be something that we can see repeated. Pulmonary valve to pulmonary trunk, kind of like a tree trunk, which will then branch out to your left and your right pulmonary arteries. So pulmonary arteries, your left and right pulmonary arteries. And you might know what pulmonary means, but basically pulmonary is referring to the lungs. So guess what the pulmonary arteries are pumping to or bringing blood to? As the right ventricle contracts, the blood goes out to the pulmonary arteries to go to your lungs and oxygenate the blood. Now, after it becomes oxygenated and returns back to the heart, you have another chamber that receives blood. That is going to be the left atrium. And then you can see your left pulmonary veins in this case, as well as on the other side, your right pulmonary veins. So looking at the back of the heart, in this case, you have your left on this side and your right on this side, but both of these are pulmonary veins. And these will lead back to the heart through the left atrium, go through the mitral valve, into the left ventricle, up through the aortic valve, and then into the aorta. But specifically, the ascending aorta, as well as the aortic arch. But Depending on how far it goes, if it goes to the upper body, it will go through here. But if it goes to the lower body, it will continue down through the descending aorta, but specifically the thoracic aorta, and then even more so than the abdominal aorta, like in your abdominal cavity. So just to be clear, the aorta doesn't look too long, but it actually goes all the way down through your thorax and abdomen towards your pelvis. So that's the major blood flow throughout the heart. But one thing to keep in mind is that this is actually a cycle. You can start anywhere and you're going to ultimately re return back to your heart. So whether you start at the right atrium or whether you start at the pulmonary veins or whatever it might be, you will ultimately come back to this spot once you go through the entire cardiovascular system. Now, while we're here, there's some associated structures that we should look for as well such as these branches of the aorta. So here's the aortic arch, and there are three little branches. And the best way to look at these is like the order in which they would go through the blood flow pathway. So starting from ascending aorta, it goes along this path from 
right to left. And this first one is called the brachiocephalic trunk. In the middle is the left common carotid artery. On the very left is the left subclavian artery. And then that is going to be your major branches of the abdominal aorta. Now, just to be clear, you will have a right common carotid artery and a right subclavian artery, but those will both branch off of your brachiocephalic trunk. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but let's take a look at a couple more things, which are going to be more internal heart structures. So between the ventricles, you have this dividing wall called the interventricular septum. So inter means between, ventric ventricular means ventricle, so between the ventricles, interventricular septum. And then furthermore, although not quite as clear because it's obscured by a lot of other structures, between your atria, you also have an interatrial septum. And this interatrial septum will have a couple of structures as well. So if you look closely, you have this little dark hole right here. This is the opening of the coronary sinus, which is going to be part of your coronary blood flow or your blood flow that actually goes to your heart, but we'll talk about that in another lecture. But what we also have is a kind of depression right here called the fossa ovalis. So what is the, or if you recall from the like bony landmarks, fossa means broad depression. And that's what you're going to see in the interatrial septum, which is a depression in the interatrial septum, which used to be like a hole or a foramen. So that's it for the cardiovascular system and its major structures. But we will also talk about the coronary blood flow in another video for the lab. But I think with that said, that's about it for now. So thank you for listening. Good luck with your studying, and I'll see you all next time.